It's now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Four-time Peabody Award winner and broadcast journalist, John Hockenberry. Mr. Hockenberry is the author of Moving Violations, War Zones, Wheelchairs, and Declarations of Independence, his memoir of his life as a foreign correspondent. And in 1996, John Hockenberry performed as spokesman the one-man off-Broadway show based on his book. Mr. Hockenberry is no stranger to occupational therapy as he served as a member of the American Occupational Therapy Foundation Board of Directors between 2000 and 2002. He's an advocate for disability and health disparity issues. Mr. Hockenberry received the Columbia DuPont Award for foreign news coverage for his reporting on the Gulf War and the Emmy for his television work. Born in Dayton, Ohio, Mr. Hockenberry grew up in New York and Michigan, attended both the University of Chicago and the University of Oregon. He and his wife, Allison, live in New York City with two sets of twins. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Hockenberry. Thank you, thank you. Hello. <laughs> I'm kind of shy. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, we had a saying back in the hospital 30 years ago, OT rules. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's great to be here. I mean, I, you know, OT and I go back a long way, and I, I was sort of flashing in, in, in front of my mind, you know, the, the important role that OT has played, and also some other things. I mean, as you know, I'm a news person. I work for NBC and NPR and ABC News. Stories. And so as the, as the, as the meeting was beginning, as the convention was beginning, you know, I was having a sense you know, this isn't really OT, this is more like a Politburo meeting in Soviet Union where we are celebrating Committee of Agriculture and uh, <laughs> the new five-year plan is very important, you know. But then I also had a sense of just how tough OTs are and how kind of ruthless they are. Um, because, you know, I don't care, Nancy Snyder, how many years you've served you still have to walk 800 yards to get to your seat, okay? And you people with 50 plus years of membership, get out there and walk. <laughs> Takes me back to my own OT days, you know. And this is really a tough crowd because as I'm coming to get in here, you know, first of all, there's a giant line at the Starbucks, you know. <laughs> Yeah, OTs really need more coffee, yeah. Sure, yeah, that'll help. <laughs> but as I'm going through the crowd, you know, people are going, oh, look, wow, he's let himself go. Uh, you know, I've heard his ADL is like way off. Yeah, and I, I heard he's been really inappropriate in situations, you know. So this is really tough. I mean, look at that chair, it's a mess. So it's very tough coming here. I mean, it really takes a bruise to your self-esteem. But then that's what OT is about, isn't it? <laughs> you think you're doing okay? No, you're really not doing okay over there. He's doing okay, but you're not doing okay. But then the meeting kind of got going, you know, the band was out here, that was great. I mean, I'm sure the band knows that they're great and that obviously you're responding to the band. We were talking backstage, I said, no, 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 I've spoken to OTs before. They're predisposed to stand up. Uh, I mean, in fact, 
you know, my whole notion that this was some kind of Politburo meeting of ancient Soviet Union and boring speeches going on for hours. No, 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 this is a full-blown estrogen rave pitch. <laughs> So I'm thinking, <laughs> no, this is supposed to be a serious keynote. I actually have to, to do something. A um, couple of things. Those of you who don't know the difference between North Carolina and South Carolina, I've got just a couple of pointers for you. Okay, North Carolina kind of high-tech, kind of high-stress, kind of up-tempo. South Carolina, low-tech, low-tempo, very laid-back, much more relaxed. Hilton Head, North Carolina, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. <laughs> if you're a lacrosse fan, you can play in South Carolina. <laughs> North Carolina is a lacrosse-free zone, okay? <laughs> but what are we here to celebrate? I mean, why do I say OT's rule? I mean, what is that about? Um, what is occupational therapy? I mean, certainly it's a very, you know, specific profession involving serious training. And I've, I've spoken in a lot of your um, commencements. At I know that some of you even have been assigned to read my first book. <laughs> which means that you know entirely too much about me. Uh, and I may be revisiting a little bit later, uh, later on. But, but uh, we understand that this profession is uh, a sophisticated profession involving uh, high technology, sophisticated theory. You know, it takes a lot to become an occupational therapist. And all of this contributes to the anxiety that OTs have. You know, I tried to tell my dad what I do, and he fell asleep, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. You know, people think you're an occupational therapist. Oh, have you been to monster.com? That's pretty cool. You know, it's like, no, 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 not job counselor. Occupational therapist. Um, what is it? Well, you know, we've almost been together in this kind of OT culture for a century. I mean, consider that. Occupational therapy, I think, though, goes back far beyond the existence of this organization or this profession or the accreditation of uh, curricula that establish degree programs for OTs. I mean, OT is something fundamental to the human experience. And, and I don't mean that because you come to all meetings and somebody gets up and says, you know, what we're doing here today is fundamental to the human experience. You know, plumbing is fundamental to the human experience. Okay. Right? You know, refrigerator repair is fundamental to the human experience. No, but, but this is seriously true. I mean, what is it that OTs do? And there's sort of two issues that I really want to talk about here. One is the, the, the kind of moment that exists when you leave rehab, when you have your skills. It's the moment that you never see. Because what you're doing in rehab is training people, giving them skills, giving them capabilities, giving them, I think, permission to do what human beings are universally equipped to do, and that is improvise with the environment, to collaborate mind with space, uh, 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 body with mind, environment with soul. It is a collaborative improvisational exercise, and it is the OT who is standing there and says, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you might be able to do that. Yeah, it would work better if you did it this way. Look at how it's been done before. Check this out. Because fundamentally what you learn in OT and in rehab through OTs is that the mind really uses the body arbitrarily. You know, the mind, I mean, is really happy to have the body that we're born with. But if things change, the mind is like, okay, let's move on. You, know, you lose your arm, let's see the prosthesis. You can't walk, let's look at the wheelchair. You know, let's get moving. The mind is predisposed to accept virtually any physical platform to operate on. It is culture that intervenes. It is our sense of body image that intervenes that says, I don't want to be a person in a wheelchair, man. You know, I'm going to walk again. I'm going to be whatever. I'm going to deny that I have this disability or that I've had this 
illness or this experience or this setback, but in fact, behind that curtain, that veil of culture and, and mythology about